Welcome to the SOB Radio Show, where we have fun, interesting guests, and hot topics. Each week, we offer insights into music, fashion, health, fitness, and humor. Do you have the perfect guest for us to interview? I want to know. Drop me a line on our Facebook page at Spunky Old Broad 1, or reach out to me on our website at SpunkyOldBroad.com. And now, back to the show. Hi, everyone. This is Dr. Gail Carson, the original SOB, Spunky Old Broad, and uh, we have a wonderful show for you today. But first, I want to uh, make sure you know that you can go to my website, SpunkyOldBroad.com. If you are interested in uh, talking with me or you want to suggest a guest or there are subjects that you want me to cover that we haven't, if you will just uh, fill out the contact form, write down whatever you you want to say to me and get it to me, I will get back to you just almost immediately. And I will talk to you about uh, the things that you would like to discuss. And if you'd like to have a conversation with me, I'm happy to do that too. But I have a great guest for you today. Her name is Amy Sherman, and she is the founder of the Baby Boomers Network. It's a website dedicated to helping boomers transition through the challenges of midlife. She's also the co-author of 99 Things Women Wish They Knew Before Dating After 40, 50, and yes, 60, which helps women avoid the disasters and disappointment they often experience when starting over in midlife. She's the author of Distress-Free Aging Transformation Package and Boy of Optimism, 10 Lesson eCourse, which uh, offers strategies for overcoming adversity and other challenges of middle age. Welcome to the program, Amy. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. You know, when I, I talk about that dating book, you know, I, there are so many disasters you hear about women who start uh, dating again uh, after, you know, whether it's a divorce or widowed or whatever it happens to be. And... Um, I'm sure you have talked to people uh, as as a founder of the Baby Boomers Network who have just had disastrous things happen. Uh, what are some of the things that um, you see are the biggest challenges that women face in their 50s? Well, you know, especially single women, if you're, you know, um, getting back into the dating world, women in their 50s, you know, uh, they say to themselves, well, am I, am I too old to get back to dating? Will I continue looking good and feeling good? Can I be uh, financially stable when I'm in my 50s and 60s, you know, to if, I, if I'm alone? Can I stay engaged in, in activities that I love doing? You know, so these are the kind of challenges you kind of ask yourself when you're in your 50s and 60s. I mean, you wouldn't ask that in, the, in your 20s and 30s. So it's different. And uh, women who are getting back into the dating world, want to look good, they want to feel good, they just want to, you know, be competitive with their younger counterparts, which could be challenging for them. Well, you know, I had a friend who was doing some online dating, and um, and she got some dates. They were not the best, because she's not doing it anymore, but I <laughs> said to her, you know, I've always been afraid to do online dating, because I was afraid men would be interested in me for what I have, you know? And she said, oh, no, Gail, they don't want anybody like you. And I said, why not? And she said, because they want somebody to take care of them and they want somebody home and you're not like that. Yeah. And of course I never was, you know? So, so um, she said, you would not fit very well into that plan. I guess I'd have to have somebody maybe 20 years younger. I'm not sure. <laughs> but uh, so, so um, what are some of the other things that, that women find as challenges? Well, you know, there's a lot of uh, a competition out there. And unless you consider yourself or you make yourself unique, especially if you're online, you know, because the run-of-the-mill woman, you know, I, I, I like to walk on the beaches, you know, I like a good romantic meal. You have to set yourself apart. And so it's, it's, it is very challenging to make yourself unique. So really what you need to do is take a personal inventory what do I know about myself? You know, what do I like? What are my interests? What would make somebody think I'm interesting? And am I interesting enough to put myself out there? <clears throat> so you really have to know yourself and, 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 and basically empower yourself so that you don't feel that, yeah, it's only, what do I do? What do I know? Who am I? You know, it's that kind of attitude that you need to avoid 
when you are trying to, you know, pick yourself up and move yourself through into a new phase of your life. Well, that is true. And I think, you know, uh, that's one thing I think I know myself pretty well. I'm sure people would say things about me that I don't even know about myself. But mm -hmm. basically, I really do think I know myself well. But I always um, I always look at that uh, ad that's on TV where the woman who is just absolutely breathtaking, she says, I know I want a date, but I just don't know where to begin. Right. And they say, oh, we'll just go to this website. But I'm sure, you know, you've heard horror stories, too. So... I always talk, one of my talks that I do is how to reinvent yourself. And so um, what do you think it means to reinvent yourself? Many women, you know, when you get to be a certain age, you feel stuck. Some women are working at a job for 20, 30 years now. Uh, they may not be happy there. They may feel, you know, it's not stimulating or exciting enough for them. So they get unmotivated. They get anxious. You know, it's it's kind of like... Uh, you know, is this all there is? So basically what you need to do when you reinvent yourself is to figure out what is it I really do want? And that always begins with a single step. So you need to figure out what will motivate me to do something different. If you're doing one thing for so long, you know, can I step out of my comfort zone? Can I do something that would be exciting and stimulating in the latter part of my life? So I like to tell my clients to write down five things that would, they would like to happen in their life, maybe in the next week, in the next month, even the next year. So kind of think about, you know, get yourself goal oriented, you know, whether it's be, you know, do I want to spend more time in nature? Do I want to, you know, perhaps learn a new skill? I always wanted to learn piano, you know, can I do that? You know, to write down certain goals for yourself. And so that way, you'll again, it's taking that personal inventory. What do I want? What do I need? Who am I? And write it down so that you could set some goals for yourself. And when you set some goals, the next step to do is to really ask yourself the right questions. What do I need to do to get me closer to this goal? So what what if I wanted to spend more time in nature, for instance, what do I need to do to do that? You know, and obviously after work, you know, you need to, after dinner, be able to, I don't know, go and take a little walk in the, in the woods, whatever. You know, I have, um, one of my clients is a, a woman in her 50s, and she's always wanted to be a private investigator. Now, that's an unusual field for a woman to get into at this stage of her life, but she really wants to do it. So she's kind of doing an assessment, you know, what would it feel like? What would it look like? What would I say? What would I do? So you have to, you know, ask yourself, what do I need to do immediately to get myself closer to this goal? What must I do consistently to get me closer to this goal? And, you know, just in general, what do I need to do? You know, what kind of research do I need to do? What do I, what would uh, make, you know, who do I need to speak to? <clears throat> what organizations do I need to join? So, so it's almost it, like having a bucket list. Well, it is. And uh, I think it was Jack Canfield who said that he has a bucket list, you know, it has about 5,000 things in it. And he, he probably did about 4,099 of it already. But uh, when he talked about it, I decided to make a bucket list to, you know, just travel, personal, you know, career. And, you know, and it's a good idea to do that. Yeah. Write down what it is you would really like to do, you know, because we have so much to look forward to yet, you know, 50 is, and I'm sure we'll talk about it, you know, what it means to be 50 and, and you know, it's not old. So we, we have a lot of, of living to do yet. And so we need to, to get ourselves out of that stuck mode and that uh, disappointment mode perhaps, and, and get out there and visualize what we would like to do. And, and very important when you visualize to really feel it, get a good picture, hold it in your mind. See what it would be like. And I asked this woman who wants to be the private detective or the uh, private investigator, I said, what do you, you know, visualize, what will it look like? You know, so she's doing that and she says, you know, it really feels good. You know, you have to trust your instincts and see if this is something you could really see yourself doing and, and then keep your thoughts steadfast on that goal so that each day you're doing something towards your goal. And, and that's how you reinvent yourself know what it is you'd love to do or even like to do, you know, what gives you pleasure and then, you know, focus on that. 
So it, it, it's not difficult to do. It's just people don't take the time to really think about, you know, what, what do I really like, you know? <laughs> well, it's interesting, you know, because um, when, when you have a minute, you know, when, you, when you're doing your day, whatever that is, and you have a minute, if you don't have a list or if you don't know what are, what are some of the things that you'd be interested in, you just kind of stand around and say, okay, now what? Whereas, you know, five minutes can be a lot of time to do something. Right. So even if you have five minutes or 10 minutes or 15 minutes, whether you can pick up something to read or whether you can uh, check something out online or you can uh, find out where an event is happening, any of these things are, are really, uh, you know, a way to utilize your time to the most uh, effective way. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's really amazing what can be done when you really prepare yourself like that. So when, but some like, like you're saying, this woman is visual, visualizing herself as this um, private investigator. Of course, there's enough TV shows on there. She can get a little bit of a hint, but um, you know, some of the goals, like you said, are far away. Some are, you know, close 90 days. Some are five years, some are 10 years. Um, What do you do when something is so far away? How do you, how do you keep motivated? Well, you know, and that's a, a great question. You know, you, you really keeping the the vision in, you know, the uh, visualizing what you want and keeping that vision in your head uh, often will keep you motivated. Uh, and another thing is, and it's a very good question to ask yourself is why am I doing this? So if, you know, if you, you want to be a private investigator, you know, why do I want to be a private guest investigator? And then give yourself very good of rational reasons why you're pursuing this because the more you could tell yourself why you're doing something the more you you stay motivated to do it even when you come across the obstacles that you know inevitably you will cross but another thing to do you know and I said visualize stay focused you know always keep your goal in mind even though you know we, we want to go from A to B but what's going to happen is you're going to go from A to you know to the side to the left to the right to the up to the down until you get to B you know so there's going to be trials and tribulations in between and you sh- if you give up on yourself then you know you'll never get there but if you keep that vision you see yourself at at if you're going to B you know you see yourself there <clears throat> You will get there, you know, and, and it may take a little longer than you had anticipated, but you'll get there. So stay focused. A- another thing to do, and this is very important, is to not get yourself overwhelmed. You know, if you think about what you need to do to become whatever it is you're trying to do in your lifetime, it gets overwhelming. So, for instance, again, this private investigator, what does she need to do? Well, she may have to go to s- school. I don't know what it involves, but she has to take classes. She may have to get a license. She has to get an office. She has to get furniture for the office. She may have to speak to lawyers. You know, there's a lot of details and that could overwhelm you. So if you get caught up in the overwhelm, you may find yourself not pursuing your dream, but rather take one step at a time and speak to people, see how they did it, you know, and that kind of thing so that you feel, I can do this. So, uh, and, and, and that's a, a, another thing, your attitude is very important the whole way through. So what you have to say to yourself, what are you telling yourself about what's going to happen? Are you telling yourself, you know, this is possible, you know, this, I can really do this. Or are you telling yourself, no, this is impossible. Well, you know, <laughs> I, I think it's, uh, <clears throat> it's interesting because um, the one thing that I always say to people, one of the things that I ask myself and I don't always answer truthfully but the question I always ask myself is does this have anything to do with where I want to go because I am so malleable in many ways you know if somebody asks me to do something I really will try to do it and uh, as a matter of fact I just took over the uh, chairmanship which is a um, going to be a thankless job of my uh, 60th college reunion oh so. <laughs> dear okay <laughs> but you know I love my school and I love my classmates and so I said I would do it probably two people will show up myself and one other but um you know uh so and a friend of mine said you know no is a complete sentence so mm-hmm. I think it's really important to say to yourself 
does this really have anything to do where I want to go? And of course, you have to know where you want to go to get that said and done. Yes. But I think that's an important thing. So going back to the dating game, mm -hmm. uh, how does someone prepare themselves for this? I mean, I would think that uh, they would be afraid to take somebody home. I think they would be uh, maybe afraid to share too much. I mean, you see all these things on TV. In fact, you won't believe this, Amy, but um, I'm sure you know who Bob Berg is. Bob is a sure. yes. well-known author, a friend of mine. He's been a member of the you know, Florida Speakers Association. I've known him for probably 30 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got a Facebook request the other day, and it had his picture. It wasn't him. It has his picture <gasps> right on top and then off to the side. So I knew this guy was, a, and he was one of the first people I reported as spam. But um, I, so I, I immediately called Bob. He wasn't in because it was like a Saturday night or something. And I left a message and I said, this is the name. He's using these two names. I don't know if you can find him, but these are the two names. And if you need to report him to Facebook, you should. Uh, but that was, you know, and I get so many of them, so many uh, Army colonels and Navy admirals. And wow. so if I delete, but, you know, some women fall for all of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you, you do have to be savvy. <laughs> and especially, you know, with social media, you know, you can't fall for all the traps. But, uh, you know, I, I have many <clears throat> single clients who check out background checks, you know, before they see somebody just because of that reason. And, you know, and they, you know, you find out stuff. So, but not everybody does that. And that's why I think- Well, it's, see, it's, that's what your client can do. Your client could be the private investigator. Right. Or <laughs> yeah. All these yeah. women who are finding these people on Facebook. Exactly. You are exactly, that's so funny. Yes. Cause she could do that. And that would be a big business nowadays. It would be, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so you, you do need to be very cautious and very careful. And that's why when you do, you know, go online and try to meet somebody, you shouldn't just give them too much information about yourself and you shouldn't meet them right away, you know, talk to them, see who they are. And even then, of course, you know, you never know. But, uh, you know, and that's th that there's a whole science behind online dating, which, uh, you know, could take a, another two hours. But um <clears throat> And yet I'm surprised how many people do find their their chosen one online. I mean, I can I can think of a dozen just off the top of my head who are very happy and uh, found each other online. But it wouldn't it be nice if friends could fix you up, if they could still fix you up because there's a lot of people who meet that way as well, you know. So uh, and then of course there are social events you can go to which is something that uh but I guess if you're not looking for it, that's when it happens, you know? <laughs> that's uh, what you say. I, I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and, and the reason for that is because you are opening your heart to re receiving. And that's very important because, you know, if wherever you are, I mean, you could be in CVS, you could be in Walmart, you know, and you could, you know, meet somebody if your heart is open to meeting. And uh, I do have clients who've met in the supermarket, you know, and so it is possible, but you can't shut yourself off to the possibility. You have to be available and let, you know, so to speak, the, the, the powers that be know that you are available to meet anywhere and any time and in any venue. Um, just to uh, talk about that for a minute, there are so many venues to meet. And I always encourage my single ladies to go where they love, you know, to where, where they're interested in, you know. So if you're interested in uh, the, the botanical gardens, you know, join the organization and go to their meetings and you'll meet like-minded people. You know, if you're political, then go to your political organization and you'll meet like-minded people. So go where you know, you know, you're going to enjoy it. And then if, uh, you know, by any chance you meet somebody, that's great too, but at least you're in a a venue where you feel safe, comfortable, and you're also enjoying the uh, afternoon or evening. So, um, well, it's interesting. <clears throat> um, this is many years ago, and he was much younger than what we're talking about. But um, I used to take my little Yorkie back and forth every month for 11 years from Florida <laughs> to California, Florida, to California, and she loved it. And so I was, I met somebody for, um, you know, just I, you know, an iced tea or something. We were outside um, at an outside okay. table. And um, uh, while I was there, we must have had, oh, I don't know, at least, I mean, we were only there 20, 
minutes. We must have had 25 people come up to pet the dog and say how cute she was and so forth. And he said to me, boy, this is it. If I'm ever going to meet a woman, I'm going to have to get myself a dog. That's so right. It was, it was so funny because he was absolutely, you know, right. So what are some tips? Give me three tips for improving our relationship, whether it's a spouse or children or uh, a love interest or friends. What are three tips for improving relationships? Well, you know, the most obvious one and the one that I hear women complain about the most is the lack of communication. You know, communication is the foundation for all healthy relationships. When we talk to each other and we hear each other, that, in, you know, it, it empowers us. It, it makes us feel like we're heard. It, it, it gives us, uh, uh, you know, motivation to want to continue talking. So it's very important to be a good communicator and a good listener. So basically, I mean, these are the obvious things. You don't want to interrupt somebody. You don't want to give your opinion unless you're, it's asked for. And you also... Uh, you want to seem genuinely interested in who you're talking to. When somebody, when you meet somebody, or with, when you're with somebody and you, you know, you're asking questions, they know you're engaged in what they're saying. So communication is so important. And there are so many husbands that I, you know, from some of the wives that I speak to, th that just, you know, they they don't get it. <laughs> Tell right. me the minimal amount of information, and that's it. Right. I, <laughs> but agree. A, a, I agree. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately. So, you know, communication. And what, what does that entail? It means repeating back what you hear to make sure you heard it right, to validate the person. Oh, that sounds great, but, you know, I don't quite agree with you. Let me tell you what, how I feel. You know, those kind of things where you're having a dialogue, not an argument, but you're having a dialogue. So communication is really the number one thing to, that really improves relationships. And when I see couples, that's the, the first and foremost thing that I work on in just getting people to hear each other. The other thing is that it has more to do with yourself. Be happy. <laughs> and that's difficult for some people because, you know, they're, they're not happy because they're overweight. So they're waiting to lose the 20 pounds or they're not happy because they haven't uh, found their ideal job. So they're, they're miserable and they take it out on other people or they, they just, you know, they wanted to be in a different place in their lifetime than they are now, et cetera, et cetera. People are waiting to be happy. And it's so important to be genuine, of course, be honest with yourself and just to focus on what you do have. There's so much that you can be joyful about because we could see looking around the world how many horrible things there are. So if there is joy and you could find the joy in your life and pick it out and, and pay attention to it. When you acknowledge it, people around you will see that, hey, look at, look at her. You know, she looks like she's in a good mood today because you're feeling good about what you know you already have. And then anybody in your life enhances what you already have. So it's so, you know, valuable to be, to work on being a happier person. Don't wait for it. You know, we hear happiness is not a destination. It's a journey, that kind of thing. We've all heard that, but it's so true. Smell the roses, you know, enjoy wherever you are and what you're doing and who you're with. Be happy, smile a lot, laugh a lot. And the, yeah, the last, yeah. yeah, go ahead, because I was going to say, people always say I'm always smiling. And so that is my one trait that, that yes. is, is really true and real, is I do smile a lot. But go ahead with tip number three, because we're all, almost, we got about two minutes left. Okay. Uh, well, cooperation, negotiation, adaptation, compromise, you know, these are all buzzwords. You know, when you're with somebody, you have a, a, a healthy marriage, you know, you need to, you know, you need to cooperate with that person. You know, you need to negotiate things if you don't agree. You know, you have to adapt, be tolerant, be patient. These are all, you know, buzzwords, but they're so true in improving a relationship. And when you're aware that maybe you're lacking in some of them, maybe you're not patient enough or whatever it is or tolerant enough, if you could acknowledge that you aren't and work on becoming better at it, then you will definitely be improving your relationship with your That's children, with your partner and whoever it is. Yeah. Yeah. Th those are really good tips. And I think, as you're saying, communication is number one. There's no question about it. Well, folks, uh, this uh, is the end of part one with Amy. And um, you can see she has a wealth of knowledge. I hope you're taking notes so that you can really listen to what she has to say and make sure they are, it's what you are, are 
you know, what you need in your life. So stay tuned. We're going to be back with Amy in just a few minutes. 